Hey, what's going on, guys, and welcome to another episode of Building on WordPress. My name is Josh Donnelly, and in today's episode, we are going to take a quick look at how to turn a standard cornerstone drop down menu into more of a mega menu where you can drag and drop, uh, create rows and columns, and add in really whatever you want to design out your mega menu. Now, this is a little bit of a workaround, but I promise you it is super, super simple. So the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is add in our navigation element. And we'll just start with one, but let's go ahead and add in our products dropdown. So we'll click on our elements here. We'll uh, type in dropdown or drop, and we'll find our dropdown element here. We'll go ahead and drag that out. And you'll notice it's our standard default style. So it's just got our toggle here with a drop down area. And that drop down area appears to be 14 M wide. Let's go ahead and style our toggle first. So you'll notice here at the top, we have our toggle. Let's go ahead and click on that. We want to enable text and we'll go ahead and deselect the graphic here. And then we're going to set our width here to auto and our height to auto as well. And then we'll scroll down. We're going to turn our border radius off just because it's not necessary here. And our box shadow will turn off as well. And then we'll go ahead and type in our navigation title. So here I'm going to type in product and there we go. Um, and it looks like our default state is black and let's go ahead and make our interaction state purple here. So now we can tell it's active and inactive. There we go. So now that we've styled our toggle, and there's plenty of other things you could do with the toggle, but I think that gets it to a pretty good spot here. Now let's go ahead and work on our drop down area. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to select the drop down and we want to make sure we're working on the drop down. So we're going to select it here. And where we have our width of 14 M's, we actually want that to span the full width of the browser window. So we're going to go ahead and just do 100%. Now that doesn't look right yet, but that is what we want. And then we're kind of using this drop down area um, as a container. So this isn't what we're necessarily styling. And so we're going to go ahead and click on this and we are going to make it transparent. And then to hide it a little more, because there's some styles already applied default, we're going to hide our box shadow, which gets rid of things there. And I think we should be in a pretty good spot. So now we're going to want to go ahead and actually center this drop down area here. So what we're going to do is click on the drop down come over to customize. And this is one little bit of CSS that we're going to put in here. It is really easy and I will include the snippet in the description below, but we'll go ahead and type EL with a dollar sign. And that basically targets this specific element. And then I'm going to do a period X dash dropdown. So now I'm targeting this element specifically, and that's why it's in the element CSS as well. So this element, and the drop down area of that element, that class. And then we'll go ahead and type in this here. So we'll do inset, inline, start, auto, and we'll make this important. And inset, inline, end, auto, important. So that basically centers this here. So you'll notice now our drop down takes up the full width, it goes to the, fully to the right edge and fully to the left edge. The next thing we're going to do here is drop in, and this is what's actually going to serve as our drop down. We're going to drop in some sort of container we might want to use. In my case, I think I'm going to use a row here, and I'm going to go ahead and drop this into our drop down area. Currently, that row is stretching the full width of our drop down now, but what we're going to do is click on that row and tell it to respect our global container. I think this looks best, where now our row is right in line with our logo there and right in line with our other content as we scroll. So now we'll go ahead and click on our row and maybe we want this to be, I don't know, just let's say three columns. And now we get to go ahead and style. And this is where you get to sort of figure out what you want this to look like. But well, we might make this a white background here. We'll add in some padding because I love me some padding. Uh, this is where we'll actually add some box shadow maybe to separate it out a little bit from the background. Something like that. Now we're getting there. Maybe a border radius, something like this here. Let's go ahead and make our box shadow a little harsher just to separate things out a little bit more there. All right, so now we got this stuff here and this is fully functional. Let's go ahead and add some items in. And if you don't like how close this is sitting here, you can come down to your drop down here, this area out of your row, click on that. And under margin, you can create some offset here. So we could give it like, you know, a separation of like two M's and now it drops down a little bit there. 
Now you can start styling and you could put whatever you wanted into this area here. So you'll notice in my actual example here of what I'm using on this site, um, I have a drop down and I just put some buttons in here and styled those accordingly. We could do something similar to that. Um, because these are containers, you can actually create loopers and consumers. So here I'm pulling in the latest resource and it's piping that through. These are buttons. These are just, you know, headline spans, I believe, uh, with some lines separating. them. So we can kind of design this however we see fit. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll click on this. We'll add in. We'll just duplicate whatever we do here, but we'll add in a headline. We'll make this a span of some sort. We'll give it a name, uh, amazing products. And we style that, you know, I don't know, separate it out a little bit. And then we add in a line. And again, you guys do whatever you want here. Um, and then you could add in a standard navigation element, or you guys could use buttons to build this out. Um, you know, whatever, whatever works for your styles. Uh, let's go ahead and just do something like this for the time being. And boom, let's do now we might want that to line up a little bit more. So we'd take out our left padding here and there we go. Now we might grab this area here, jump down to our column. We'll copy it and paste and paste. And now we've got ourselves a decent looking mega menu here. And again, you'd style uh, however you see fit. We'll go ahead and save this. We will assign this, which we always need to do with a header. So let's go ahead and jump over to our outline. We'll call this demo header. We'll come over here to settings and assign this to the entire site. And I'm just going to give this a priority of negative one for the sake of example. So it overrides the one I've got there and let's preview the front end. All right. So here we got our logo on the left and we got our mega menu on the right. Currently it's activated only by click. I could change that if I wanted to, by coming here, I like to keep it on click while I'm designing so I can keep this open, but you can come over here to drop down and on trigger where we have click, you could click hover, go ahead and save again. And now we'll refresh our page. And when I come over to product and I hover, I have a nice little mega menu. I can work within this mega menu. And if I come out through the bottom of the mega menu, it disappears. The only caveat with this whole thing is because we are using that drop down container, um, hovering off on the right side, you're technically still in the container. So it doesn't close and hovering off on the left side, you're technically still in that, uh, drop down container here so it doesn't close but as soon as you leave that drop down container then it will consider that a mouse away as always i hope you guys find these videos useful don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already if you do have any questions please leave those in the comments below and i will try to get back to you guys as quickly as possible and in the meantime i will see you guys in the next video peace